Hello, hello, chemistry team. Coach coming at you today. We're going to get into some lab stuff today, getting into our journey on lab lectures. So much integrated information from lecture into lab. That's the whole point of lab, right? Is to try to, you know, get a hands-on experience. That's where you really, well, the majority of people. Some people can just sit and lecture and learn everything, but that's that's the rare, rare bird. Most people have to go and do it and mix stuff together and see it happen and go, oh, that's what they were talking about in lecture. That makes sense now. And some people just love putting together different laboratory techniques and running laboratories and seeing, to me, it was like magic. I originally wasn't very good at lab, but so I had to train myself Sometimes you can make one of your bigger weaknesses one of your greater strengths. So I train myself with the help of other people. So I sought, just like anything in life, you want to get good at something, seek out experts in that area. So I sought out the advice of people who were master analytical chemists. And one of my greatest weaknesses in lab, it was mostly a focus issue, <laughs> right? I had to learn how to focus in lab because I drop stuff and break stuff all the time. It became a great strength of mine. So I love teaching labs. Absolutely love the elbow to elbow uh, in lab with my students, watching them do a technique, saying, hey, look out for that, look out for that, and just seeing a student go, oh, man, I thought I was no good at titrations. All I had to know was that right there, and now I'm going from C's to A's. You know, simple little things. You don't know what you don't know, right? But one of the most important things in the laboratory, of course, is we're going to be making measurements, quantitative and qualitative. But we're going to focus on quantitative measurements right now. Uh, yeah, quantitative observation is called a measurement. We don't go, I'm going to go make a quantitative observation. We're going to make a measurement. We have to understand that the majority, we'll do a whole separate video of measurements in general, but there are the two types of measurements. You've got the digital ones, like most of our digital balances, and then you've got the the graduated ones, like a graduated cylinder, a, a ruler, a burette, something like that, where you've got the lines. And a lot of times you're trying to read a measurement that's in between those lines. You're like, oh man, so you, you gotta kind of estimate it. And sometimes even on a digital balance, you know, you're like, hey, 3.0028 grams, and you go to write it down, then it goes from 3.2007 grams, and it's fluctuating in that last one. You're like, darg, right? That's okay. There is inherent uncertainty or error in measurements, right? There's going to be an error because we have to estimate that last digit. There's no such thing as an exact measurement. It cannot happen, right? So that last digit, we're going to be totally certain about all the digits in a measurement except that last one. Even on a digital balance, that might be fluctuating just a, a tad sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. And so we need to learn where that digit lies. One of the most important techniques I need you to be able to do is pick up any measuring device. I don't care what it is. Doesn't even have to have, we don't even have to make a measurement at the time. You just look at the measuring device and say, hey, I can estimate that to two decimal places or a hundredths place, or I can only estimate that one to the ones place. So I, I want you to be able to figure out very quickly in your mind, I'm going to show you the steps on how to do it. I call it Dr. Lux says three steps to becoming absolutely uncertain. <laughs> right? But we want to find out where that uncertain digit lies in a, when you make a measurement based on whatever measuring device you're using. Um, digital balances are easy because it's provided for you. It's the graduated ones. We got to you know, work on when we have linear scales. So that location, where is it? Tenths place, hundreds place, ones place, thousands place, ten thousands place? Wait we'll be able to tell when we look at the manufactured measuring device. That digit, where it lies, is called the absolute uncertainty. And a lot of times you'll see people say, you know, it's 3.21 grams plus or minus 0 0.01 grams or plus or minus something. You'll see this inherent allowed uh, error in that uncertain digit. So what I want to do is go through the steps on how to determine that. Absolutely critical. Why would you bother even making a measurement if you don't know where you can measure it to. Can you measure it to three decimal places? Can you measure it to two decimal places? If you don't know, you're just guessing. You're just, you know, shooting archery in the dark or, you know, it's like, I don't even know where my target is. And just, you know, whipping off arrows everywhere. Just don't shoot them straight up. That doesn't, doesn't come down very well. <laughs> Trust me on that one. Let's look at how to do this. Here we go. So we're going to start our journey on the three steps to determining the absolute uncertainty of any measuring device. You want to get really good at this. I've taught so many labs 
where students just guess. They, they're just like, well, I just feel it should be to two decimal. Chemistry is not about how you feel, my friends. <laughs> it's about collecting data properly and then analyzing it with logic and reason. Arr, there's no feelings involved. <laughs> okay. I guess you could feel good about learning how nature works. Let's say we got some measuring device, whatever this is. This could be a ruler, a graduated cylinder, it doesn't really matter. All we know is whenever you pick up a measuring device, you'll see little etchings. If it's glass, you'll see little etchings in it, or a ruler has etchings in it. And usually you'll see some numbers here, but not every line is numbered, right? That'd be bulky and expensive, those kinds of things. But you can kind of, and normally you'll see some lines are longer than others. So you see the five and the six. And so we can kind of eyeball it. A lot of measuring devices, there are certain types that just fall with your gut nice. It's like, I, it, it seems like my gut tells me this would be good to two decimal places, and it turns out it is. But there's a few where your gut will tell you it's good to two decimal places, but it's only good to one decimal place. The uncertainty is in the tenths place rather than the hundredths place. So, yeah. Um, most undergraduate measuring devices are going to be the type where, yeah, you could use common sense and probably get it right, but you wouldn't get the other ones right. My goal is to make you a 100% effective, not 95% effective. So I'm just going to go through the three steps to determine the absolute uncertainty of a measuring device. Again, where is the uncertain digit lie? That's what we're after. And you ha once you determine that, you have to read every single measurement from that measuring device to that uh, digit, whether it's two decimals, three decimals, the ones place, tens place, most of them in chemistry to be one or two or three or four decimal places. All right, so first thing we want is to determine the increment of that measuring device. All right, we're after the absolute uncertainty, but we need a couple pieces of data before we can determine that. So what's an increment? Well, it's just the space between two, the two closest lines or etchings in this scenario. So for example, if say we pick this line, in this line, and you took a slice across that measuring device, like that, just take an ax, chop, chop, and you get this little slice, like taking ice cores from Greenland or something, and you take this little slice out of it, and you're like, wow, that was from 52,000 years ago. That's so cool. I just read a whole article on that. This is amazing. That is called an increment. So we want to know what that represents. And you can kind of eyeball these. I'm going to show you how to calculate them, but you can eyeball most of them. Right? Um, so I can say, hey, that's 5, 6, 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, 5, 5. So it looks like 0.1 kind of makes sense. And that's only true because there's 10 little divisions between them. We got 10 fingers. So we tend to think in the a decimal system naturally. But if you get some weird measuring scales, weird linear scales, you can calculate it quite readily. So for example, if I want to just calculate, I just do this in my head real quick and then I double check it using common sense. Take the difference between any two values on the measuring device. In this case, I'll take five and six, but it, it doesn't matter which, which two, just take any two numbers on that measuring device, you're good to go, and subtract them. And then divide that by the number of increments between them. That'll give you what an increment is. So for example, if we did it for this one, We would take six. Let's say this is like a, a, a graduated cylinder. We want some units. So let's say these are milliliters. Right? Wouldn't say milliliters there. It would probably say it up on the top somewhere. So let's say we have uh, six milliliters minus five milliliters. So I'm going to take the difference between those two uh, points on the measuring device. Now, how many increments are between them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's 10, right? And that's unitless. So I'm going to put that 10 there. Well, last time I checked, six minus five was oh, one. Don't even need my calculator for that. So one divided by 10 is 0.1 milliliters. That makes sense? 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, 5.5, 5.6, 5.7, 5.8, 5.9, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, 5.29, 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 5.35, 5.36, 5.37, 5.38, 5.39, 5.40, 5.41, 5.42, 5.43, 5.44, 5.45, 5.46, 5.47, 5.48, 5.49, 5.50, 5.51, 5.52, 5.53, 5.54, 5.55, 5.56, 5.57, 5.58, 5.59, 5.60, 5.61, 5.62, 5.63, 5.64, 5.65, 5.66, 5.67, 5.68, 5.69, 5.70, 5.71, 5.72, 5.73, 5.74, 5.75, 5.76, 5.77, 5.78, 5.79, 5.80, 5.81, 5.82, 5.83, 5.84, 5.85, 5.86, 5.87, 5.88, 5.89, 5.90, 5.91, 5.92, 5.93, 5.94, 5.95, 5.96, 5.97, 5.98, 5.99, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, 5.29, 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 5.35, 5.36, 5.37, 5.38, 5.39, 5.40, 5.41, 5.42, 5.43, 5.44, 5.45, 5.46, 5.47, 5.48, 5.49, 5.50, 5.51, 5.52, 5.53, 5.54, 5.55, 5.56, 5.57, 5.58, 5.59, 5.60, 5.61, 5.62, 5.63, 5.64, 5.65, 5.66, 5.67, 5.68, 5.69, 5.70, 5.71, 5.72, 5.73, 5.74, 5.75, 5.76, 5.77, 5.78, 5.79, 5.80, 5.81, 5.82, 5.83, 5.84, 5.85, 5.86, 5.87, 5.88, 5.89, 5.90, 5.91, 5.92, 5.93, 5.94, 5.95, 5.96, 5.97, 5.98, 5.99, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, 5.29, 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 5.35, 5.36, 5.37, 5.38, 5.39, 5.40, 5.41, 5.42, 5.43, 5.44, 5.45, 5.46, 5.47, 5.48, 5.49, 5.50, 5.51, 5.52, 5.53, 5.54, 5.55, 5.56, 5.57, 5.58, 5.59, 5.60, 5.61, 5.62, 5.63, 5.64, 5.65, 5.66, 5.67, 5.68, 5.69, 5.70, 5.71, 5.72, 5.73, 5.74, 5.75, 5.76, 5.77, 
let's determine the family of that measuring device. They're all manufactured in a certain way, and that, whoa, I think that was a falcon or something that just went flying by my window. I hope my cats are inside. Um, so based on how that manufacturing device was manufactured, manufact that measuring device was manufactured, will limit how many decimal places we can read it to. That's a common way of saying what's the absolute uncertainty of a measuring device is how many decimal places can you read it to. Eh, okay, that's, that's okay, because most of them will be to at least one decimal place, but not always. Might be limited to the ones place or the tens place. If it's really big, like that gigantic thermometer over, oh, where is it? On the way to Barstow, I forget exactly where it's at, but when I drive to Vegas, I go by uh, some place halfway between here and Vegas. It's got like the world's largest thermometer. It's just like this huge thermometer. <laughs> it's awesome. All right, what's the family? Well, it's based on what the increment is. So once you determine it, and if you screw up the increment, you're going to have issues. So once you determine the increment, like we determined the increment of this was 0.1 milliliters, that will peg what your family is. And there's three main ones that I've encountered in my life. I've so I'll just put those three. Are there other ones? I, I don't know. I never run into them before. So, but pretty much, you'll run. You'll probably almost always run into this one, the tens family. There's the twos family, the fives family, and the tens family, and they're read slightly differently. When you use them as measuring devices, we're going to use them slightly differently when we estimate that last digit, the uncertain digit. The tens family is by far, by far. I'll put a star there. The most common. Most of your measuring devices will be the tens family because they make the most sense. Because again, how many fingers do you have? Ten. Well, right? And we think in tens. All right, so twos family, if the increment, not I, the increment, if the increment has a two in it, it's the twos family. If the increment has a five in it, it's the fives family. Don't overcomplicate it. And if it, and the way I do, if it's not one of those, it must be the tens family, but the tens family would have a one in it when you're reading it. So this is how my brain does it. I look at the increment, and that's 0 0.1, right? Is there a two in there? There isn't a two in 0 0.1, so it's not the twos family. Is there a five in it? There's no five in 0 0.1. There's... So it's not the fives family. Therefore, by default, it must be the tens family. It's got a one in it. But if that had been 0 0.2 or 2 or 20 or 0 0.02 or 0 0.00000002, you see a 2 in the increment. Boom! It's the twos family. And that's going to impact two different types of things later on. If you see a 5 in it, 0 0.5, 50, 0 0.05, 0 0 0.0005, you see the 5 in there. Boom! That's the fives family. And if you don't see a two, and you don't see a five, boom, by default, it's the tens family. So that'll be a 0 0.1, a 10, a 100, 0 0.0001, 0 0.01, whatever it is. So pretty easy to determine the family. It just comes from whatever the increment is. So don't mess up step one. <laughs> Let's go to our third and final step. Now we've arrived at our destination. So step one, determine the increment, either calculate it or eyeball it. Step two, determine the family. So now for our example, there's no two in that increment, right? Increment of 0.1 milliliters, there's no five. So this is the tens family, right? -o. So that particular measuring device has an increment of 0.1 milliliters and is in the tens family. It doesn't really matter what the units are. Now we can calculate the absolute uncertainty. This is what we're after. I don't want you guessing it. No guessing in that, right? The absolute uncertainty is just the increment you determine in step one divided by the family you determined in step two. That'll give you some answer. Look for the first non-zero digit. Where does that lie? That's your uncertain digit, and that's how many decimal places you can read that measuring device to. That's the, the absolute uncertainty of the measuring device. So, for example, if we did this particular one, if we did the increment divided by the family, what's our increment? 0 0.1 milliliters, right? We determined that. What's the family? That's the tens family, so let's divide that by 10. So what's 0 0.1 milliliters divided by 10? That is 0 0.1 zero one milliliters now sometimes you'll see people do this 
plus or minus 0 0.01. It's an oversimplification, but we say, hey, there's a fluctuation uh, in that second decimal place. That's the uncertainty. And the way you read this is you look here, that's your first non-zero digit, right? That one, where does that fall? Second decimal place. So that means read to two decimal places. We're getting squishy on the board there. So that means I can read this to two decimal places every single time I use it. Does that make common sense? It should with the tens family, but let's take a look here. Would you agree that if I was reading in between the lines, right? So let's say I was like in between here. This would be 5, 5.1, 5.2. And if it fell in between, so let's say I had a measurement that fell right there. Right? You can see it's between 5.1 and 5.2. So it'd be like 5.1 something. So if this is 5.1, 5.2, even though they're not written and etched in there, you don't have etchings on every increment typically. So it'd be 5.1 something. Do you see how that makes sense? That's not going to happen with the twos and fives families. They're going to rub you the wrong way. I'll show you how to make that estimation in a whole nother video on doing that because that takes a little more, uh, uh, a little more in-depth analysis. So let's do a couple more linear scales like this and see if you can. I'll write them up on the board and I want you to pause it, pause the video, do the increment, do the family, step one, step two, and step three, calculate the absolute uncertainty and see how many, uh, you know, where the uncertainty lies or how many decimal places you can rate it to. Let's practice that. I'll do so, uh, maybe I'll mix it up, maybe an easy scale, anything in the tens family I call easy. And let, well, I'll throw some twos and fives in there to show you that it just doesn't, what your gut wants to do is actually not what your brain is supposed to be doing. Let's do this one. Let's say we have another graduated cylinder. So you should be able to figure out the units from that, right? Um, I want you to tell me what the absolute uncertainty is of that particular measuring device. So step one, determine the increment. Step two, determine the family. Step three, calculate the absolute uncertainty. Pause it. Do those three steps. And we're going to do these three steps over and over and over, especially if you take my lab, the first couple of labs. I'm going to have you show me these three steps until you've proven to me that your thinking process, procedural thinking process, is correct. Um, and then you don't need to show it anymore. You just Once you do this enough, you just do it in your head. But this allows you to teach it. If someone comes up, well, how come you got two decimal places? You don't just say because, right, or it makes sense. You can actually say, well, let's figure out the increment. Let's figure out the family. Let's divide those. Boom, have at it. So let's do this. We can do it, my friends. I'll do it in blue. Now you can eyeball it, but I'm just going to calculate. Right? So the increment is the difference between any two values. I only have the 9 and the 8 on there, but you can do any values on the measuring device. And since that's a graduated cylinder, let's go milliliters. Now let's take the difference between any two values and divide it by the number of increments between them. One, two, three, four, five. There's five increments, agree? So let's divide that by five. So what's nine minus eight? That's one. What's one divided by five? Point two. Let's double check it. Eight, eight point two, eight point four, eight point six, eight point eight, nine point zero. Makes sense, right? So this increment. Right there is 0.2 milliliters. Goes up, so between every line is 0.2. All right, we got that. Now, what's the family? Well, it's based on the increment. Is there a 2 in it? Yes, there's a 2 in it. So the increment is 0.2 milliliters. So the family is the 2's family. Ooh, that was weird. Right, it's the 2's family. There's no five in it. There's no one in it. So we're, we got the twos family. That's going to make a difference when we calculate the absolute uncertainty. So absolute uncertainty is the increment in step one divided by the family in step two. Look for the first non-zero digit. So what's our increment? 0.2 milliliters. Boop. What's our family? The twos family. So divide that by two. What's 0.2 milliliters divided by two? Point one milliliters and some people will put a plus or minus there it's okay because the non-zero digit falls in the first decimal we're going to read to one 
decimal place. So this particular measuring device, the absolute uncertainty is to the tenths place. And we can read it to one. We can read this to one decimal place. That's kind of what you would say. Hey, here's a, a graduate center. I can read that to one decimal place, and that's going to be what we estimate. Now, let's show you how that doesn't really roll well with you. Let's say I had a reading right here, and I wanted to read that. So this would be eight point two and eight point four. Correct. If these increments are 0.2, so it's between 8.2 and 8.4. Everybody agree? So what my gut wants to do is go 8.3 would be right there, so that'd be like an 8.27. It's between 8.2 and 8.3. No, you can't do that. Muy mal, not good. Right? Because what you did is you went mental twice. There's no increment written there. There is no 8.3 increment. You can't put that there and then redo all the math. Right? You can't make a mental increment within a mental incre increment. You can only do it once. Right? So that is only good to the tenths place. You'll see how this pans out when I show you in a video on how to read these measurements properly. This family is going to really impact how we estimate that last digit. So where our gut wants to go to two decimal places, but we can't. It's limited to one. Let's do one more. All right, write this baby down. Let's say we got a really big graduated cylinder this time. And we look on the side, and there's a 50 there and a 100 there. Go ahead and do the three steps for me and see if you can calculate the absolute uncertainty for this. All right, so pause it and do it. I will go ahead and run through the process. Oh, total fumble. Roll the one. So let's take any two numbers on here. So I'm going to take the 100 and the 50. So my increment will be 100 milliliters. We're used to small numbers in chemistry, but I've seen some pretty big graduated cylinders. I actually have one downstairs. I should have brought it up. 100 minus 50. Now, how many increments are between these? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Looks like 10. So what's 100 minus 50? That would be 50. 50 divided by 10 last time I checked is five. So if we did an increment here, that would be five milliliters. So 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Makes sense, right? And again, you can eyeball it, but if you're ever stuck, you can always calculate it. Is there a two in there? No, not the twos family. Is there a five in there? Yes! So the increment is five milliliters, so that's the fives family. Yay! All right, so we did one example from the tens family, one from the twos family, and we got one from the fives family. Let's calculate the absolute uncertainty and look for the first non-zero digit. So the absolute uncertainty is the increment in step one divided by the family in step two. Same process. Chemistry is all about processes and procedures. Right. You learn the process, you can do anything. Right. This works for every measuring device. Increments, 5 milliliters divided by a family of 5. What's 5 divided by 5? 1 milliliter, or you could go plus or minus. You don't need to write the plus or minus in my class here. So that means this is good to the ones place. So we're going to read to the ones place. That's where the uncertainty lies. So we can get an answer like 52 milliliters, 94 milliliters. If it's right on the line, you know, 80 milliliters, right? You need that zero on the end there. So we'll do, so this is um, the first step when we do the next video on how to make actual measurements. So the first thing you have to do when you're making a measurement is determine the absolute uncertainty of the measuring device. Otherwise, it's a fruitless effort. This is just step one, but you'll get faster and faster and faster at it. You can do this. So find any worksheets you can. Practice this, practice this, practice this, practice it till it's become just ingrained in your subconscious and you, you can just pick up a measuring device and within five seconds go, boom, that's good to two decimal places. Boom, the absolute uncertainty is, is to the ones place or something. You can do it.